Hi, my name is Mehdi Tuzi. I'm author of the book Keys to Success at School and Beyond. I'm also contributing author at Huffington Post. Welcome to this workshop, which is about how to self-educate yourself. One of my personal heroes is Isaac Asimov. He was a great scientist and author of more than 500 books. He said, self-education is the only education there is. So let's look at the problems with self-education. To some people, it thinks it's a hard thing to do. It just seems hard to them. Or they think they are not smart enough to learn by themselves. Or they have fear of learning. Or just because there is no classroom, they think they cannot learn. Or it's expensive. Or because they have lack of, there is a lack of material, they think they can learn. Education is about learning to think. And self-education to me is about understand what you know and what you don't know. So let's look at the benefits of self-education. What are the benefits? You become an independent thinker. You can think for yourself. You can have your own opinion about something. You absorb information naturally. And that is, you are not forced to learn something or a spoon-fed information. You retain information naturally, and that stays with you longer. You get the courage to do research, and that gives you the confidence. Stronger next step. Next time you want to study for a college or university degree, you feel stronger. More fun. If it's something it's interesting to you, it's more fun to learn it. Future. Future is about self-education, and internet is a great tool for it. So how do we start? I would say, try to learn from everyone and everything in your life journey. That is to say, from the morning you wake up to the moment you go to bed, you will learn from everyone and everything. And there are seven learning styles, and professor Howard Gardner from Harvard University, he discovered seven learning styles. One of them is visual learner. These learners, they learn by looking at images and pictures. The other is physical learner. They learn by their body. Some are musical learner. They learn by singing or saying. Social learner, they learn in a group or team. Introvert learner, they learn by themselves in solitude. Logical learner, they learn by numbers. And language learner, they are good at languages. And in my case, in my university days, I was a combination of social learner and introvert learner. That is, when I wanted to study math, I studied in a group, and afterwards I went to a quiet room and I studied for myself, which is introvert learner. And that improved my learning and I managed to be very successful at university. And you can be anyone, any part of the learning style or a combination of this learning style. And I describe more about the learning style in my book, Keys to Success at School and Beyond, where you can learn how to learn faster and easier by discovering your learning style. So, one of the things I want to say is occasional math. When you do shopping, try to do the numbers in your mind. This is an exercise for your mind. Travel. Travel is a great way of self-education because it gives you exposure to new things, new people, and it opens your mind. Also, challenge yourself when you learn something. If there is no challenge, there is no change. And there are three step motivations which I want to describe here. And I devise these three steps because 90% of self-education or learning is about motivation. And first of all, you keep a role model, somebody you look up to. And second, keep a positive mind. That is, when you have difficulties, when you are down, think about the success you had in the past. And that gives you the energy, the warmth you need to go to the third step and keep trying. So follow these three steps 
and you will see you have great motivation in learning what you want to learn. Google search. If you want to look for, let's say, gravity or moon, just put gravity and put EDU or moon EDU, and that gives you access to educational material. One other thing I want to say to my, I mean, I'm saying to my students all the time is understand the concept. Because when you understand the concept, you can transfer the knowledge to the next level. And that's important to know because uh, when you learn something, some people, some of my students try to memorize it and that will go away after a short time. But if you learn to understand the concept, you can transfer to the knowledge to the next level. So I devised three simple steps so you can learn the concept. One is to read it, read the subject, and second is to analogize it, to find an example, and three, think. To give you an example, let's say acceleration. You go into Google and put acceleration analogy, and you see tons of pictures and images that can help you to find an example. And then you sit down and think. Let's say you're on the bus, the bus accelerates, and you move back. That's understanding the concept. So follow these three steps, and you will see you will understand the concept, and you become a stronger learner, and you can transfer to knowledge to the next level. Learn how to make scientific observation. This is something that you don't have to be a scientist to observe like a scientist. I devised three simple steps that you can take to observe like a scientist. That is, in a pen and, if you have a pen and paper or your cell phone, you can make a sketch. When you make a sketch, your brain automatically filters the most important information. Two, quantify it, that is to put numbers on it. And three, reflect, think. A good example is Charles Darwin. He made a five years voyage. And after five years, when he got back home to England, he looked at his data, what he recorded, and he reflected. And he made new discoveries. So let's take a look at an example, selling a house. I have a lot of friends who are in real estate business, and they ask me to come with an example. And number one, we make a sketch, and the most important part of the house is bedroom, kitchen, basement, and bathroom. Let's say you want to sell this house. So first you sketch it, and second, you quantify it, you put numbers on it, and that is the section of the house is bedroom, kitchen, basement, and bathroom. You measure it in time when a potential buyer walks in. You see how much time the buyer spent in each section. Let's say, for instance, bedroom, he spent five minutes. Kitchen, three minutes. Basement, two minutes. Bathroom, one minute. The second buyer, potential buyer, he spent six minutes in the bedroom, four minutes in the kitchen, one minute in the basement, and two minutes in the bathroom. And the third, again, seven minutes in the bedroom, three minutes in the kitchen, two minutes in the basement, and one minute in the bathroom. The more data you have, the more accurate is your observation. And after that, you sit down and reflect. Grab a coffee or tea and sit down and think. What can you do to each section so the potential buyer stays longer. Let's say if, for instance, you see the basement, the number is low, you will see, okay, what can I do? So can I change the decoration? You do brainstorming. What can I do so I make the basement more attractive to buyer? So follow these three steps and you will uh, improve your scientific observation and improve your business. And in my book, I put a lot about self-education and that's available to you. And if you have any question, drop me a note. And if you need consultation, send me a note again.
Thank you and have a great day.